Hey, welcome to the Jess and Scott Show tonight. Boy, is it going to be a treat. Not only do we have some amazing people on our show with us, but we have to start somewhere. And I have to tell you, one of the things that comes to mind, regardless of the top of the topic, is I have my little note card here, and let's see if I can do it without the glare. If it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. And in our world of having to work really hard to stand out and to get a start building awareness sometimes the biggest changes come from those biggest leaps but in the end it's all fun and games until somebody ends up in a cone so we got to be careful about all of that <laughs> and as Scott is queuing the open, I'm going to share a couple of comments that came in before the show started. And here's Heather. She's like, yay, I might actually be able to make it live this time. We hope you're here, Heather. And viral promos, we're excited if you join us live too. This may go down as, in the, as one of your epic presentations. I think it's cool. We have the status of epic. Um, that's pretty high bar to maintain, so let's make sure that happens tonight. And the last one from David Leopold. Great guests, great hosts, great HOA. The math is simple, you know the time zone thing with me. All right, we'll see you on the replay and in the comments tomorrow, David. All right, let's go to the open. Here we go. Hey, Jess, take it away. It's all yours. Right on. You know, this topic is one of my favorite for a variety of reasons. Typically, there are two sides of a coin and two sides of a story. This this topic's a little bit more like dice, so I have no idea where we're going to end up. And maybe it's like two dice, which, well, then you have roulette and all kinds of other fun games that I know nothing about. So we should just go straight on to that. How's your day been, Scott? Oh, oh, I wasn't expecting you to ask me about my day. At the end of the day, it's perfect because it has ended up right here with good friends and people in the film strip, and we're talking about uh, a topic that is very exciting to me. I have some opinions about it, but I'm on a learning curve, so I'm interested to find out what, uh, what will transpire. So hey, that's Debbie how my day in. is. That's, well, that's really cool. So here's Debbie. I got here, too, against all odds. Debbie, we're glad you're here. Yay! That's always fun. Have Debbie in the audience, too. So, you know, when we're talking about free, when we started having... Oh, sorry. Excuse me, everybody, but I have to do shout-out to Phil. Yeah. Okay, okay Phil. <laughs> when we were talking about this, the idea for this show, Scott and I, we started having all of this, this really big in-depth conversation, and I was like, you know, not only do we need one awesome guest, we need to amazing guests that are really going to rock this show. And that's where we both thought of Sherry and Ray at the same time. I said one, Scott said the other, and they were like instantaneous. So we knew we had this show pegged if everybody was going to be available when we were ready to do it. So that is the exciting news about this show. With no further ado, I want to introduce Sherry and Ray. Sherry is always experimenting with ways to push the envelope to raise the quality of social media practiced by companies and business owners. And Sherry, how are you tonight? I'm very well, thank you. Happy to be here, actually excited to be here um, at the coolest uh, late night show ever. Thank you very much. I really liked your comparison. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I went, oh yeah. <laughs> And Ray is also joining us. His business background is in restaurants, hotel, and performing arts management. He understands the importance of collaborative communication, economy, and excuse me, identifiable ROI. And welcome, Ray. How are you doing? This is going to be such a party. I know, right? <laughs> this is like, oh yeah, we do have a topic we're going to talk about too, right? So this is, <laughs> yeah. This is <laughs> 
<laughs> this is so great because you know these these are you guys are such good friends you know and 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 we met uh, together right on the lunch show for a long time. You, you 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 are the matchmaker, Ray. I don't know if you've ever thought of it that way, but you are literally the matchmaker, right? No, but I like fitting on the roof. <laughs> you know, I actually go back a little farther than your show with you, Ray, and with you, yeah. Sherry. We met in a mastermind group of all places, and then uh, you were like, come check out this Google Plus thing, and so I did, and then you were like, come check out my my lunch show, and I did, and that's where I got to see Sherry some more, which was really awesome, and that also met Scott. That's true. Exactly. That's right. We go back. We go way back. We go way back. So this is kind of like we're inviting everybody that's watching us just to join our kind of like you know which is like little happening. Speaking of happening, like this whole this whole black and white thing is like way back. This like takes me back. This takes me back to like mid '60s. You know, CBC TV in Canada here, where when he had like three channels and they're all black and white. I feel like Dorothy waiting for the door to open into Oz. You know. <laughs> 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 of course, I had to have that reference, right? <laughs> hey, you know, I'm used to. Re well, I love that. I'm from Kansas. Love it. Ah, yeah. there you mm -hmm. go. That's right. So tonight, when we're talking about the concept of free, there are so many places, way, 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 way out in the stratosphere, we should go. Where should we start? What do you think, Scott? Well, you know, I always start off, uh, and you, who knows where I'm going to go, and I think you might be surprised this time, uh, Jess, but I have full confidence in you that um, you'll be able to uh, rescue the program from what I have to say. <laughs> Zig Ziglar uh, said it all when he said, give to get. So if you, if, if you, if you do that... Uh, I mean, it, it's just one of those things that uh, that will happen. If you, uh, what whatever you whatever you send out will be returned to you. Some people think that it'll be returned to you tenfold. So, why, if that's true, give out the best that you've got, and it'll come back to you, and you'll be certainly blessed. And there's also the law of reciprocity. Uh, and, and so, if I if I really help you out in your time of need, and you're going to be, you know, so grateful for that. And it's without expectation of, of return, so it might be paying for it. But let's just say eventually you are ready to buy, then you're going to look around. I've said this before. You'll be looking around. I could go to the stranger down the street, but why should I do that when I can actually go to Scott or to Ray or to Sherry or to Jess? And you know, Because I already have a relationship with you. So that all works out. It's a skill set. But what happens when you know, you've given away so much that is free, that all of a sudden, you know, does that devalue what, what you have to do, uh, what you have to give away? Or, are there people who, you know, break the law of reciprocity and uh, what not everyone is a Zig Ziglar? Will they just be energy drains on you and suck you dry of everything that you have and all of a sudden you wake up uh, poor and destitute because you didn't know how to pivot from the telling to the selling. So these are some of the topics we're going to be talking about. Oh, I and thought you just did it and we were all going to go home. <laughs> oh, no. I thought it was just like spin the bottle this, or something. I mean, it was just done, you know. This, this, is not, this is not going to be uh, free 101. These are kind of like all of the basics <laughs> and then we're going to drill down and keep on drilling down from there, all right? I love it. So, um, so give to get. So you know, so that's the religion. Is you know, if if you if you have the law of reciprocity, give to get, then you're going to then you're just going to have abundance return to you, and it is a matter of faith. Because if you don't have faith, then you don't got nothing, right? <sighs> okay, I'm going to jump in because I I, I think that. I <laughs> That's all very that's all very lovely, and I really feel like I should light an incense or something. But I think that you know when we're talking business, I don't think it's a matter of faith so much. I think one of the prime motivations, reasons that we do this, that in, certainly in this sphere, and then, and then the whole social media thing, you know, changed all that around, right? I mean, the whole idea of doing free content and all that, and just pushing stuff out and offering consultations and offering advice for free, that's relatively new. But that's that's basically that's marketing. Right? I mean that you have to let people know who you are, what you know, and the bottom line, and why you do that repeatedly and to a target market is that they can, you, so that they can build trust in you. 
that you're the person that when they need something, you're the person they're going to go to because you've built a relationship and you built trust by offering them free material, free content that's going to help you know that helps them. So I think there's a definite uh, there's definite strategy there as opposed to the reciprocity. And yes, in terms of sharing things, there definitely that comes into the in, into the into into the factor. I think part of it's like the Jewish mother thing, you know. Well, you know, I give you this, so therefore you're gonna scratch my back and I'll give you that, or you know, uh, I mean, there's there's that, there's that guilt thing, right? I mean, it's like, well, Jewish mother or Catholic mother, whatever. I mean, you know, oh, he shared three posts of mine last week. I'll have to share something of his, you know. But people, that's just human nature. We want to do that. But ultimately, going back to what I started to say, is that I think the strategy is that you do that so that people know who you are. My blogs are my marketing, so you have to give that advice and that information out so people know who you are and that you do know what you're talking about and then, then you build that relationship and build trust. Yeah, I, I second what Ray said. It has to do with uh, building trust. Also on top of that, um, the information that you give away has to give some indication as to your ability to um, be able to be capable of original thought. So there are many people that give um, you know write blog posts about um, how to how to blog posts, which are valuable and shows people how to do things, or they're primary to, primarily news sites. But um, really, the the valuable free content that is going to really establish trust in terms of um, building that um, that valuable connection in terms of somebody wanting wanting to do business with you is that thought leadership content where you take a piece of uh, news and then you give your own take of it you kind of push it a little bit further um, so that kind of free content is more than more than uh, valuable to give away, even if it takes uh, too much of your time to give away, um, or maybe just the right amount of your time if it if it pays off for you. Yeah, well, and you know, how does it? How could it not? Because one of the things when we're we can go almost anywhere and find how to's or the top three things or the seven things not to do or whatever. What well, it can be a little harder to find are the people with the original thoughts that tend to not be reshared as much, but their content actually helps you think and and me think and our boxes and our worlds grow in a way that give us an opportunity. So um, that makes me think if we're giving our best stuff away for free, how does that, how, you know, don't we have to have something in reserves to show people that we have even more than what we've already given them? Or is just saying the same thing that we've been saying and helping them in the areas that they're having trouble with, that's enough? I think the ones, the ones that, that type of content that comes with money, um, are the ones that are, that are very specialized. If, if we're just going to talk about speci uh, this specific topic of, of our own field, social media, and it could apply to different fields. Um, the ones that would you could apply a certain amount of fee to it are the ones that are specific for specific kinds of businesses. So you could write a blog post, let's say Facebook comes up with a page, and you can give your thought leadership um, sort of um, thought leadership point of view. Look at your crystal thought leadership crystal body and say, "This thing, this is how I think um, this change is going to push the field forward or change the direction." But then uh, you can charge people with respect to how specifically they can apply that change to their particular field of business. So how can a um, laundry shop use this specific change to their advantage? That's when you can start charging money. So if somebody who has a business calls you up and say, you know, I read your article, I really liked it, you, I 
I, you know, I was impressed by the the way you analyzed it. Now I really want to apply that. I want to know how that applies to my business and say, well, this is how. Like, let's talk, and I can, I. After I found out a little bit about your business, I can give you a proposal and determine a fee structure. Does that make sense? I think that makes excellent sense, and, and if I just want to relate back to, I think it was a post by Peg Fitzpatrick a while ago, and I think we actually ran a show, uh, a lunch show about the topic uh, soon afterwards about picking your brain. No, you, know, you can't pick my brain. It costs too much. I got it up right here. <laughs> Unless you're a surgeon, that's right. And and yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, it's you know. And when you know, when do you cross that line when you give your advice? Because I mean, often I get pings or, or or requests, you know, asking me questions about things. And and if it's fairly general, like for instance, you know, uh, the 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 new embed link on Google Plus, for instance, is back now on Monday as. Uh, as we thought it would be, and those things, that's technical, that's, that's, that's available for everybody. But when they ask a, a specific question like, okay, uh, my business had th has three Google Plus pages and I have a problem in doing this and how do I do that? At that point when it becomes customized, I think that's where that line is. I, I, think, I think, you know, if you're asking me to help you specifically with a problem that you have, then I'm going to have to ask you to, you know, basically say, listen, if you are interested, these are my fees, or that, you know, block this much time aside, that kind of thing. But other than that, time is valuable, and I think what we offer, because it looks like, oh yeah, you can get anything you want on the web, you can Google anything, but who has the time to do that research? We do that for a living. We keep on top of all this for a living, and our value is basically is is saving you all that time. And and coaching you through through what we've already gone through for years. Exactly, exactly. And uh, yeah, go ahead, Scott. Well, I, I was just going to say we seem to be stuck on. Uh, uh, it's my observation that Google Plus is uh, stuck on uh, social media 101. There are all these posts about you know share content, be valuable, you know all of that. Well, maybe what. Maybe what Ray is saying, and and you as well, Sherry, is sure give away the general stuff, the broad strokes. But how does it relate to me? Well, as soon as it gets down to that granular, you know, my particular business, then that's where you pivot from the telling to the selling. And is that a skill that you need to develop in terms of, you know, because we we want to help and you know how do you how do you develop that skill to say sure I'd be more than happy to tell you that it's just that I now I'm going to pay now I'm going to charge you money for it well you just you just if if you value your own time then you learn to uh, say no you turn to say it's it's pretty simple you say yes uh, if I'd be happy to do a hangout with you if it's on Google Plus, and uh, we can determine a fee structure for the the service that you need. It's pretty simple. And if they don't like it, they can go away. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think you hit a good point, Scott. I think that, that what you're saying. I mean, and we talked about that earlier is is being stuck on the 101 thing. And and yes, the most popular shares you'll see the po most popular posts are always you know 10 ways to find influencers on Google Plus or you know how to format your Google Plus post. And that's because there are so many new people on the platform. You know, uh, you know, for those of us who've been here a while, it's it's you know, we're, we're our eyes are on the horizon, but many people their eyes are on the ground. You know, they're thinking, okay, they're going step by step, trying to figure out this platform, and and those and that's why those posts are so popular. Every time uh, Denis Labelle shares something or Martin Chervington shares something, it's just gobbled up because there's people hungry for that information. What they they need once they pass that is someone to put that all in perspective put that in context for them because it's overwhelming and I think that's where it breaks but at this point I think we're not there yet I think most people 90 percent of people on the platform are still looking at that step-by-step -step 101 uh, level well and is selling the right word or is learning the ask right because I'm thinking about fundraisers they have this art of telling this amazing story giving a lot of information and then they turn around and they have this ask, and it's typically compelling, and it's typically um, it's typically an emotional connection of some sort. Yet at the same point in time, it is not an overt selling process because you already know all the stuff about 
me. You already know what I have to give. So do I really have to sell you more? Or do I have to learn how to ask you or a variation of an ask and say, basically, it is now time to pull out your wallet? I, I, I just see a comment by Heather, and I, I think maybe... Good. One yeah, here we go. I, I just did, because... too. I have it pinged here. So how do you transition from, yeah, I can do it this time, but ask again, and it is not for, or ask again, and it's not for you to. Yes, I can help, and it costs this much. Same idea. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's really hard. That's hard when you're on an open platform like this, where, I, as I said earlier, people can grab all the tidbits that they want. I think maybe I think I I use a rule. What we talked about earlier is, is that line where it goes from telling to selling is 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 that point where it gets customized, where someone's asking a specific question about a specific problem. At that point, I would pull them into a private uh, post or a private chat and, and 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 say, well, if you need help with this at that point, then say, yeah, I can help you with it. Yeah, there's, okay. not, a, there's not a question of I, I can do it this time, but I won't do it for free next time. It is the question of uh, you can say I'd be happy to ask answer general questions, but if you have a specific question about your particular business, I'm afraid uh, that's something that uh, that is under like I would. That's something I would charge for. That that's yeah. part of my consulting business. Consulting. And not because it's you, and I'm not be, and and and, I'm and not, not personal, so that, yeah. yeah, exactly. I would say basically because I have all this information that I've already I have at my fingertips that I've shared, and I, and I have resources, and if I don't know it, I can point you to someone else. But if you're asking me something where I have to take the time and work out a strategy for you, or work out a plan for you, or that kind of thing. That's that's my time, and my time is valuable. The other step, if I already have it, then that's not really an issue for me. Well, I, you know, wouldn't, I wouldn't even go far to explain that. This is no, I, I, I don't understand why you have to explain to somebody. Oh, I, I wouldn't do that to someone. I, I, that's my interior. That's my interior. Uh, oh, okay. something from yeah. an article that I saw, and I will actually post this on the comments in in the comments after the show. And it says, um, refer them to your free resources. So if we really are these givers of all of this content and this idea of how, maybe, you know, how to do things, but also the why and the reasons to allow them to do whatever needs to be done, point them back to that direct, point them back to, excuse me, point them back there. And then if they want more, then they know, okay, so that is basically my free product. And now, I have a paid service that they can come back to and maybe even have a little bit of conversation about that. In That's exactly what in I script. do, Jessica. Is it? Uh, yeah, I have a QR code that points to my YouTube channel whenever I meet somebody and I said, if you'd like to learn on your own, here's, I have a whole bunch of videos you can go watch on your own time. If you need more help, you can give me a call. And, um, so yeah, that was a fantastic idea. Yeah, that's that's definitely something you can do. So that, that's, that's one reason to give it away, a lot a lot away on content marketing on social media so that when someone approaches you, you establish your authority, you say, this is how I differentiate myself from other people, and incidentally, you've got general questions about it, I'll be more than happy to point you to my blog or whatever it happens to be specific, then that's what I'm in business for. I'm happy to give tactics away, I won't give strategy away. Oh, here we go. I've got a couple of comments here that are coming in. My comment tracker did something weird, and half of the comments that I was following are gone. So hmm. I apologize if I miss one that's really good. It's because of the technology at this point. Lori says, ask from the beginning. Ask often. That way it's not jarring when they hear a call to action. Sign up for the mailing list. Share your network. Lots of low-risk calls to act before you get to the big bucks. Wow. And That's then here's one from Debbie, and she says, I would love to do this for you, but it's going to pull me away from paying work so I wouldn't be able to make you a priority. Also a nice, true, honest, valuable answer. So one, one, of, the, one of the questions I have is when, when someone approaches you, Sherry and, and Ray, um, can you kind of sense intuitively if they're a potential paying customer or can you tell you know they they may want an information for me but there is no way that they will ever become a paying client so then, not in the how, beginning but when you talk to them a little bit you can find out there was I can I tell you one incident typically there is a class of people in general that 
I know they're not going to be paying customers. Um, but I tell you one example I met with this physician who had a product they wanted to promote and they wanted help with marketing and we sat down and started with uh, developing a monthly news letter for them and I quoted them a price and she said but you're only going to do this once a month and at that point I knew that this woman has no places no value on what I'm doing for her so I stopped it right there I said you know what you you're gonna have to go do and uh, go away and uh, do some um, uh, shopping around so um, I basically um, I did well she wasn't my client but in a way you could say I fired her because when somebody starts bargaining with you over something like that then you know that they don't value what you do for them and when someone doesn't value your service they're not going to be a good client what I find Sherry is is, is that um, the reason people don't value what we do is because they don't know what we do uh, it, 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 there's there's such a problem with that uh, it's 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 that's what I always run into mm -hmm. and for a long time I've been trying to get business from educating or or trying to persuade people to get on social media or Google Plus, and you know, I mean, it's, and we've talked about this endlessly. You know, when you talk about social media, you're talking about Facebook. You know, and, and so they want the Facebook page, and they want the updates done. They want tactics, and so when you even bring up the whole thing about lo it's long term, and you have to think about, you know, the ROI is 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 about you know other things than just the revenue at the first, and it's relationship building. That's way over their head. So they're not going to say, yeah, sure, I'll pay you this much money for you to tell me more of that. I just put a page up. Do some updates. I can understand that because for them, that's kind of like advertising, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so when I talk to someone, and I can tell pretty quickly uh, if they understand what this is all about. And 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 Mark points this in the book today, and I I brought up the question because I asked him why did you write a book called Social Media Explained at this point, we're 2014, and he said. Because it needs explanation. <laughs> it needs ex it's, we're still at that 101, as Scott said. We're still at that 101 stage. And he said what he wrote it for, though, is, is, is for companies, CMOs and CEOs who want to do it, who understand the importance but don't know how. And that's the difference. And, that's, and, and, and last fall, the late last fall, that's where I pivoted my business. I said, from now on, I'm not going to go after everybody. I'm not going to go after my big target market, whatever that is. I'm going to go to people that either approach me or understand what they want to do but don't know how to do it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So ju just for context, um, could you could you speak a little bit in terms of the guest that you had this morning on your show, Ray, and who wrote the book and what the book was about and maybe uh, take one or two takeaways from that so that people in our audience may be motivated to actually uh, check in and see what your hangout was all about. Yeah, well, uh, thank you. Um, well, I, 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 I had Mark Schaefer on the Lunch Bunch today, and, and you and Jess were there. Uh, and I'm, I'm a big fan of Mark's because, he was, as I mentioned, he was one of the first people I looked to or I, I tripped upon his blog, and he certainly has a high profile. So no one really has, you know, you can find Mark very easily on his uh, businessgrow.com. But he wrote a book. His last book is called Social Media Explained, and it is what it is. It's a light book uh, in terms of it's, it's very short. Because it's a handbook, it's 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 the culmination of his two-year training program for businesses, and he does a lot of like Fortune 500 businesses, uh, and it's, he's compiled that into this handbook that I suggested that everybody who deals who's in who's in the consultant put in their back pocket and take on take to their client. Now I had <laughs> I had stretched that analogy a little bit further than that and suggested it's like having Mark Schaefer in your back pocket. And we had a few laughs about that, but um, <laughs> and then someone someone in the comments said, "Well, how big are your pockets?" You know, um, so so, <laughs> so, uh, so it was interesting, and, and we talked about the, the 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 challenges that are out there, and we talked about you know the issues of content marketing. Is that a a, a problem? Because the the topic of the show is why are we failing social media, and uh, and I think ultimately it comes down to your culture. You know, you have to have that. Keener, <laughs> I'll, I'll put that in quotes for for Jess. You have, to have that, you have to have that keener in the company who understands it and wants to learn it. Because Mark, in his book, puts there's a a case study where 
he was doing a, a presentation, a seminar, and this, this guy in the front row was like taking all kinds of notes and asking all kinds of questions. And this guy was working this very big company. I can tell you after the show if you want. Um, but uh, he, he was working in this very big company and goes back to the company and you know he's 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 passionate about social media but nobody's listening to him in all these silos and departments that are overhead and he on his own he creates this blog and gets everybody involved in it and within a year he brings in 47 million dollars of business to this company from a blogging content marketing strategy obviously this guy has been promoted and he's he's now very situated in the company but you know, it, it takes that kind of person to turn things around. So, uh, so when Mark says he goes to the companies, it's the companies that understand why they have to be on social, and that's important to them. And and he wrote that book for them. And it's, and it is, it's a handbook that I suggest everybody take, you know, to read for sure. You know, and that um, I agree. And we're gonna bring up Phil. This is really funny. So we've got Phil that says there's two things everybody should know should follow in business. One, don't give away everything you know. And silly me, I thought there was a part two that he just forgot. So I asked him in the comments, and then he says, oh, hang on. Oh, it just went away. He says, he sa oh, I hit the wrong button. He said, I'm going to have to, oh, here you go. I'll tell you, but I'd have to charge you. <laughs> <laughs> that was really worth it. I thought that was good. Okay. <laughs> you know, what I'm, what I'm going to say is that that is a classic moment uh, of uh, Hangout history. That is that is one of those examples of after the fact. I wish I would have said that. So kudos to you know, <laughs> to Phil. A, you know, absolute kudos to Phil. So I also want to talk about Sherry's show for a minute because she does something, and I <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Kudos to Phil. Go ahead, Jess. Thanks. That's totally okay. Oh, I thought that was for Sherry. I made Same it here. I was thinking, hey, how come Sherry's show got an applause? <laughs> well, she... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, that cracks, cracks me up. So, Sherry, I want to know more about your open social media project. Uh -huh. Well, my open social media initiative started because I was frustrated. <laughs> Um, because I went to, I read many blog posts and I went to um, networking meetings and I witnessed many people teaching social media the wrong way and nobody was um, listening to me, um, teaching them how to do social media properly. So when uh, Google Plus Hangouts became available very shortly after, um, I took the opportunity to um, have my say. So, um, proud to say, I was one of the first weekly shows on Google Plus Hangouts. Um, so, for about a couple of years, I had a show every week, and I tried through my weekly shows, tried to show everybody, teach everybody how to do um, how to do this craft. Um, properly and I gave a lot of free information away and speaking of giving free information away lots of people uh, told me well you're just giving it away and what is left to t for you to do and my argument was that well if we teach our clients how this thing is supposed to be done properly then they are going to be better clients for us because of the same argument that Ray was was giving and uh, I really had a lot of fun doing it and now it, it was weekly now it is monthly um, so Ray has a, been a guest yes go ahead well I, I have a question because you're in academia and I know that you've had for example uh, David Amerlin speak to your class yeah, which was, came to which my was class, yeah. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. How? It, what is your observation in terms of academia and those who teach either social media or those who teach business, the business leaders of the future? Uh, are they on board or do they realize what the lay of the land is or uh, is it that, you know, the those who are teaching the future leaders of this uh, in, in terms of business, MBAs and so forth, are, are they not 
pr properly preparing, from your point of view, uh, their students for the brave new world in the 21st century? Uh, it is getting there. In general, educators are very, in general, I don't want to, you know, there are uh, tech savvy, lots of tech savvy educators there, but as a population, uh, there they are a little bit scared of technology. So it's technology is finding its way, especially Google Hangouts and um, all the different ways that you can use technology to use in the classroom. So it is finding its way, but it's crawling its way. I myself finding it really hard to get my own adjunct colleagues to join a hangout with me. Um, we are, you know, adjuncts are not full-time professors, and the way it is, uh, work. The way it works out is that we're not. Uh, we are only limited to a certain number of hours teaching per college. So um, adjuncts turn out teaching a certain number of hours at different colleges. So we're not always at the same college um, within a week. So it's hard to get together. And I've asked them over and over again that. You know, I have a video that it's it's there. I use it for my speakers for open social media, and um, I just send them out, and they figure out how to join a hangout. I said, let's just meet over a hangout and discuss our issues and network, and um, they just want to do it. One of them just came and write to me, said, and they said, you know what? I don't want to learn anything new. So there's just fear of technology among a little bit more old-fashioned educators, but uh, I'm hopeful that it is slowly changing, especially with this push in with the um, uh, special um, technology tech ed. What do they call it? Ed tech track in South by Southwest, and also TEDx education. So it is going to change, but um, it's a little slower than I was hoping for. Sherry, I'm sorry, I, I can't let that irony just, just dissipate. The fact that an educator doesn't want to learn anything new. That's, yeah. kind of, I, that's a bit profound. <laughs> I think that's yeah, it is, it is frustrating because I, I think I'm sort of the only one in our department that does hangouts. And uh, yeah. And when I when I went to, well, maybe I shouldn't say this, but in general, I'm not the only one who thinks that in general, in general, maybe uh, the educators that are in my age group, maybe in the previous generation, uh, they're a little hesitant to adopt technology. They're a little I slower. I would say I have. Um, I would say that it might also be in the generations below you it, yeah. to some extent too. I don't think there's as much adoption as you might give them credit for at yeah. the moment. I and that so it's awesome to hear you talking about, you know, the South by Southwest piece and the um, the TEDx education piece because that's now where something oh, okay, got it. Let's see where we can go with this. What is that possibility? So the center, center of the universe might be shifting from one place to another. Okay, you Which have something good. from so Phil. I have a, and then, yeah. So and then I've got Phil, a comment. Okay, so give it away, or excuse me, give a give away the why and the what. Charge for the how. I believe I heard that from Ronnie Bincer. Well, that's how people uh, give their workshops, right? When when people yes. go and give workshops at. Uh, um, chamber networking meetings or other networking meetings, they give a workshop about, for example, why you should be using Google Plus or why you should be using Hangouts. Then the people that are present at a meeting, they say, yeah, this guy's right. I should be using Google Plus for my business for to get value for SEO or semantic search. Then they hire the guy who speaks to show them how. So that's perfectly a legitimate way of uh, giving away information as a gateway to um, to gaining customers, and and in the case of a private consultant or you know a solopreneur or a consultant or something like that, then that's the how. In the case of higher education, that's what you do as well. I mean, that is what higher education is all about. Is this is the how? It's the leading edge, right? Sure. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. 
Well, I think he was in solidarity with you and saying, I agree with you, and this would be another way to say it. Was I right about that, Scott? Yes, I'm in solidarity with you, with you, Sherry. And maybe an insight that I just had, and, and please comment on this both Ray and Sherry, and that is that you know, as a, as a private consultant, we share the how. This is how you do it, and that's why you're hiring us. But if you're in higher education, you're teaching people about the how as yes. well. Yes, yes. So I also, oh, go ahead, Ray. No, I was going to just say because I, I, when I think of the how, I think of something again very tactical. So I think of okay, in terms of what depends on what education you talk. Liberal arts to me is a why, you know, whereas whereas science and technical stuff is a is a how, uh, you know, it's just. I'm not sure if that's that's true. That's just oh, how that, I, that's I, profound. I, I, that 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 that's that's terrific. I wish I'd have said that. And tomorrow I will be the one who. Tomorrow you will say it. Yes. Oh, I love it. You have that, to know that, how to how to how to write and how to perform and how to do. I don't know. So liberal arts have definitely has a how component to it. Oh, definitely. But I think of liberal arts, liberal arts as more in all in, is, is putting all that stuff into context. Yes, you have to learn how to communicate. You have to learn to write. You have to learn how to do this stuff. Uh, it's a question, I think, of degree. It's, it's it's more focused on that, and the technical or or the you know the applied arts is it more f focused on on the how. That's and both open the brains for curiosity and for pushing those possibilities depending on I actually think you know depending on which path you choose so I wanted to think about something this is another article that I will post in the comments after the show is over and this was written by Mark Shervington and it was on the psychology of um, free on Google Plus and he actually shared part of a conversation that he and David Amerlin had and specifically the quote David Amerlin says, free raises the bar for everyone. Now, I want to hear your thoughts on that. Free raises the bar for everyone. Free raises the bar. For I think, personally, I'm going to say something that <laughs> um, some people might not like. But I think there is a certain extent of giving away free going on that is making, creating a population of entitled people out of the general population, and such that when you are a business owner, some people feel entitled that you should give away services or products to them. So I'm not sure in some instances it raises the bar. So, okay. I don't know. What do well, you think, and right? that's interesting because we could have a whole conversation about generations because I believe both my generation and the one right below me, or I am part of the one below me, I'm right on the cusp of the two, um, <laughs> I believe they, we were all kind of born entitled into some degree. And I, even listening to myself, sometimes I go, oh, wow. Okay. So I don't necessarily, yes, I ag agree with you, but I don't know if it comes from the amount of free that we have or if it comes from something else. And um, there, I'm going to I'm going to well, hazard it. When you go to when you go to a um, to a trade show, sometimes people go to trade shows just to get free yeah. stuff, and they yeah. come to your table and say, "Well, don't you have anything free stuff to me?" They don't even look up their head to see what it is you're offering. I'm I'm talking about those kind of Okay, got it. That makes in sense. That, yeah, in yeah. that instance, that's actually lowering the bar. You know, yeah, to, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's yeah. just giving stuff away to grab people in, and I don't think I don't think that's yeah. what David's referring to. It. I'm trying because I'm trying to put that in context. Of, okay, David Amerlin said this, so that has to do with semantic. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, okay, so so, and I'm thinking, well, it does in a sense because what we're talking about now is that you have to give away free. Uh, that, that, that may not even be a, a good term to use, but you have to be generous with your, with your knowledge and, and, and content and all that in order to gain the, the, the yes. results from, you know, from the semantic web. If you don't give stuff out there, Google and the web is not going to know who you are and how you know, expert you are and, and, and that type of thing. So you, there's, you know, people are not used to giving away 
content and free stuff. So maybe it means that this we live now in a situation where we have to raise the bar and we have to, this just has to be our culture online, that we have to share content freely in order to be, and I think Gary Vaynerchuk uses this example where he says, you know, we're all sort of like our PBS stations, right? We give tons of stuff for free, and at a certain point, you don't mind asking for donations to keep the station afloat, right? So I, I, I think that's kind of, I understand, I understand it in that context. Well, I also think David, that from a David's post definitely uh, raises the bar for everybody, because especially his Sunday posts. Mm -hmm. So he, he writes this really generous, long post that is of really high value. So in that context, yes, it raises the bar. Because in order to really, um, it raises the quality of the quality of the posts that we all have to have to write. Yeah. And thinking from the customer perspective, I'm looking at it from okay. So if if it's raising the bar, I'm going to know what's the bar, and I'm going to know somebody who's going a little bit above that because I feel that I experience that there's something different that separates one path from the main path as a place I might want to consider. So yeah. you heard it. You heard it here first. Free is the price of uh, becoming the authority and owning the territory. Yeah, it all goes back to that discussion of how you separate that quality free content from regular free content. Remember how we talked about the, the valuable free content is the one that has thought leadership involved in it, where, where you like David Ammerland posts where he shares something and then he he gives his perspective and looks in his crystal ball and gives his views as to where he thinks it might take us that would be the kind of free content that would raise the bar yeah and and it's and, and it is it's it's raised pretty high when we look when you're talking about David and Martin and them and they put so much quality content out it's it's difficult you know even to imagine keeping up but I think that what you say is very important Sherry is that you sh just sharing stuff out is not necessarily you know quality free for sure I mean you can just link dump everywhere and just share the same thing everybody else is sharing what's important is that you have to have your stamp on it you exactly. have to have your point of view on it and I think that's that's what separates us from maybe the generation before in terms of marketing yeah, and then here's something from Lori. I agree, Sherry. I believe that comes from the corporate extension of power to outdo the local mom and pop. Customers are trained to be rude. The larger companies can absorb it. The it blood sucks the smaller folks. Wow, that was very descriptive. <laughs> and I think that's a very good point. That they're you know that's that's where they're they're leveraging their advantage in some respects, maybe. Yeah. So here was another comment. Um, let's see, Trina. In, in the spirit of free and giving, I thought this was very, this was very amazing. Jess and Scott and you have given me so much. They are surely now in my trust to work with. As my hope for the flower seems ready to fly, and as we share back and forth, they can trust um, and discern me. I have worked as a gifter all of my own life. I thought that was, and I think that's really cool to know that there is this spirit of giving and, and connection with people that spans generations, that spans geography, that we can all come together. And free or not, if, and I'm a believer of whatever I put out there, I will get back in some fashion. And one of the things we didn't talk about, and we don't really have time to go into, which is too bad, and that is, you know, maybe free actually has some tangible benefit and this was one of the things that I really took away from social media explained was if we're looking to put it into spreadsheets and numbers and processes that's actually an element of failing because all of the things that you can't that you don't necessarily think of not can't but don't necessarily think of the opportunity to speak with somebody, a new network connection that's going to send you referrals, being able to um, have you know 
being invited to come to a very prominent conference to actually speak in a bigger audience in a bigger audience than you ever have before. Those are just some examples of some of the things that I think free also opens the door for that have very positive impact on our business, but they don't translate to dollars. It's also important to to offer free stuff. Uh, with a spirit of not necessarily expecting immediately something back. Um, so when you share something thoughtful or write a blog post or when you do something for somebody or um, promote somebody, don't immediately expect them to share something back or share your update. Do it because you want to. It, it's sort of if you do it without the specific requirement of one-on-one -on -one reciprocity, it kind of releases the pressure and it's natural and it will be more rewarding. And people feel it. Mwah! Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's, a, that's a whole show right there. I that's there right. we go. <laughs> that's right. I so agree. well put. Yeah. Okay, it is time for us to move into the plus two takeaway part of our show. Last week, we wrapped up the one thing, which, by the way, I will share out now. On April 8th, we are going to have a panel about the one thing. So if you have read it, if you are reading it, and you are interested in participating in the panel so that we can talk about the big idea of the book, let Scott or myself know. Drop us a note. Um, make a comment somewhere on the page. We are watching, and it's first come, first serve. So anybody who wants to be that's part of our typical regular audience, we would love to have you. And we have started a new book, haven't we, Scott? We certainly have. So uh, by all means, if, you've, uh, if you're reading The One Thing and you'd like to join us in the film strip, please contact us. Meanwhile, Jess uh, and I have been reading, I, I previously read The Impact Equation uh, from uh, Chris Brogan and I believe a fellow Montreal, Montrealan, that's not the yeah. way to pronounce it. Montrealer, uh, Julian, Montrealer, yes. Montrealer, uh, Julian uh, Smith and uh, we're, we're going to be reviewing, uh, starting to review that as our uh, featured book. So take it away, Jess. All righty. The Impact Equation. I don't know how fancy our intro for is, is for this. Is it as elaborate? I don't remember. No, not, uh, you know, this is brand new for us as well. And so there's the, there's the cover. And what uh, the, uh, they've, they've got, actually got it down to uh, an equation. So we'll be going through uh, each of those letters um, uh, starting tonight. And we're going to do a couple of letters tonight, but not in the order that they are actually listed in the equation. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're following the book, and you know, That's so right. you'll just so have to trust about, us. We're going to talk the impact equation. Part of the impact equation is about contrast. So that's where we are going to start tonight. And in its simplest form, I'm relying on my picture for the definition. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Is that... Uh, it's a, it has enough difference to be noticed, but it's still a familiar idea. One of the things I'm really taking away from the impact equation as I am reading it is that it's really using the commonality between people and the things that we know and what our audience may know and what the people we're trying to find in our audience may want, you know, may want to know and that they already know and being able to communicate with, communicate a a familiar idea with them. And contrast is based around differentiation and positioning and interest in a particular topic. So when we move to the next part of contrast that I thought would be worth pulling out to talk, that's the ability to tell the story, your story with emotion. How much that that emotion can strengthen value and that connection that forms from that emotion is actually a place, not necessarily the place, but a place that trust can begin and you become, be, people become more aware of you. And so this is where, you know, show your sparkle comes out because to, to be noticed you have to be different, but not just once, over and over and over again. And one of the things that, and well, over and over and over again consistently, I would say. So you have the same story over time that you are actually placing yourself in a different part of the marketplace than your competition. 
which that's all we're going to talk about in the, um, the contrast side. We're going to jump over to articulate so that we can talk about the importance of the actual words we use. And when we articulate our story, it really has to have instant understanding to create that connection that you are setting the stage for with the contrast. So how can you do it with the fewest words, the clearest image? Some of the other things that they said were use, you know, the small words and analogies. I'm not big on analogies because I tend to apply analogies incorrectly to situations. So when I use an analogy, you know it's going to be right if it's related to food. And typically, my food in involves anything that has a tortilla, some sort of meat, and all the fillings that go with it in all the forms that that may come in. So you know you've got a true Jessica analogy that she understands when it revolves around the whole idea of burritos in some form. Now as far as um, what we're trying to do, Scott, if you would go to the next one, creating that connection, we actually have things going on in our brain that are, okay, yes, that makes sense, no, that doesn't make sense. And when you're doing those, that stuff, it's happening so fast. It's happening so fast that when there's a familiar idea, there is less resistance to something than if they have to, if we have to stop and think about it for a minute. So we will get more immediate and better understanding faster the less thinking we have to do to connect with our audience. And so that particular power that our brain holds and yields is something that we can practice in our storytelling so that we can make a better instant connection and have that layer of trust to work from as we're building our relationships. And it all comes down to creativity. We are filled with it. We are surrounded by it every single day. So when we have these ideas or we see something we want to save for later because it inspired us in some way, we know we're never going to get to them all. Or we know we'll get to them all sometime. It's just not going to be right now. So by saving them, by letting them work in the subconscious, by then choosing wisely to support your objectives ensures that you are staying on task with your you're staying you're staying on task with your bigger picture what is the story you're telling what are the connection points you have and if you are doing that consistently use the ideas in your idea list and choose based off of what helps you consistently deliver that message and that takes us to the last slide for tonight which is all about your purpose. You've got to know your story and stick to it. And there are two questions that did not come from the impact equation, but as I was reading this book, I just had to throw them in this presentation. And that was in Social Media Explained, talking about the why us. If we don't know the answer to why us, then we have a lot of work to do before we know what our story is and how we can stick to it in a way that will be consistent and build that awareness and that trust over time. And then Gary Keller in The One Thing, and my One Thing book is out of reach. I did stick it back on my shelf for a few weeks, is his question, what's the one thing that by doing such I can make everything else easier or unnecessary? So it's about unburdening ourselves and moving ourselves forward so we can know the story and we can stick to our priorities and we can filter our ideas well to support ourselves. So if you, um, and I think that's everything that I had for tonight, isn't that right Scott? Have yes. to unmute myself, yes, by all means. Okay, very good. And so there is a whole there are a lot of other goodies in here. I picked the ones that resonated with me. Um, and I know that if you take a take a minute and you decide to pick up this book and read it, you will probably take a few ideas away as well that are different from this. Ray, Sherry, have you guys read this book or know of this book? Yeah, well, I, 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 I yes, uh, I, I have a while ago, yeah. Yeah, I've spoken with Julian actually uh, about it a bit. And uh, you know, for me, I, th I think this was one of the first books that I read when I decided that I was going to light out on my own and become a, an entrepreneur, a solopreneur. And it is uh, uh, to Scott, 
Can I interrupt for a second? Yes, please do. Yes, Sorry, please. Sorry, I have I have to leave. It's uh, bedtime for my kids, and my battery is running out. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. We're so excited you joined us. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. This was a lot of fun. We have to chat Good. again, Sherry. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Th definitely. This will not be the last time. This has been great. Thank, Thank you for joining us, yes. Sherry. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Yeah. Where were you, Scott? Well, just, just to wrap it up, this is this is a, a book that may be, uh, to some degree, the um, either social media or how to engage your oneself one-on-one. -on -one. And if there was nothing else that I took away from it, it was the idea of contrast. And it doesn't you know, it doesn't matter how well you do something. If you're just one pretty face among all the others, you're just one tree in a forest. But if you can distinguish yourself from the crowd in some way, then you might have a fighting chance. So that was the price of it. That was worth the price of admission for me. Well, and as Jess said, uh, with with Mark's quote in the in in the book, and he said, and it's the hardest thing for anybody, whether you're a big company or whether you're a solopreneur, is is to is to complete that sentence. Only we. Yeah, and, and and it is hard. I struggled that you know from day one where I started the business. How can I differentiate myself? I mean, what do I have from all those thousands of consultants that are out there? Why would someone choose me to 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 work with? And that's a that's a continuing thing. It's like you know, trying to find out who we are is is a continuing thing. Is it's just trying to figure out what that is. And ultimately, it's you, right? It's your personality. It's who you are. It's who what you bring to layer over the knowledge that you have because everybody has that knowledge. I mean that knowledge is fairly easy to find is what comes with that knowledge and how you share it. So closing the circle, what it is that you give away is you give away just enough so that you can answer the quest that question, right? And then once your client can answer that question for you, then you know you've got them and the rest is history, right? Right. I'm sorry. I was waiting for I was waiting for Jess to say something. There. <laughs> Isn't that right, Jess? Just nod. Yeah. Just nod. Yeah. yeah. What, you know, what, what he said. I complete the circle, and I'm totally stealing this all for my own. Scott said before the show was to me was sparkle doesn't come cheap. <laughs> so. Although. I, I though know, I did know a pole dancer named Sparkle, and she wasn't too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> talking, about giving, talking about giving stuff away for free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then and Phil says plus one for burritos. <laughs> The only analogy that I have revolves around any form that you could put the ingredients of a burrito in. I never knew that. Every every day I learn something new about Jess, and I learned two things new about Jess today. So this is a banner day, banner day. That's great. <laughs> I want, so tonight, you know, um, it was awesome having Sherry on. Ray, it is awesome having you here. We... Uh, we could talk about this forever, and we could probably take a million tangents because we have so much fun when we're together. That's the, that's that's the crux of it. I wish we had more than an hour, and I wish it was earlier in the day for you because then maybe we could. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. Um, did you have any closing thoughts, Ray, before I wrap up the show? No, I think we covered it fairly well, and I I, I think you're just a, a you know you and Scott are just a perfect example of of being generous with your time and your knowledge and your personalities, and sharing that every week with people. And I think that's a you know that's it's all going to come back to you. It is. So I'm gonna end uh, I'm gonna end with one of the same pictures, right? This is if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. I so love this dog with a bazillion tennis balls in his mouth. And the last piece of that is, but don't forget, no matter what, you've got to keep your eye on the ball. I, I really don't remember where I got these from, but I love cards, and I have stacks and stacks and stacks of them that have these wonderful messages on them. So when you're thinking about the value of, the value of knowledge in relationship to free or not free, this was an, a really, really amazing show. And please 
take the time, sh encourage, share it out in your stream, encourage people to watch it that haven't seen our show yet or that you think might be interested in our show. And we'd like to say next week on March 25th, we it will be Scott and myself, and we are going to be doing a point counterpoint. So in addition to us bringing our questions that the other one doesn't know about, we are also open to taking questions from you, our audience, and answering those live on the show. So we are going to totally put let our guard down. Who knows what is going to come our way? And come join us next week for the point counterpoint so you can get Scott's opinion, you can get my opinion, you can see what we know, you might even see what we don't know, but we try to know or make up. It's up to you to decide. All right, thank you everybody for joining us at the Jess and Scott Show, and we will see you next week. Good night. Bye.